everyone, it's Cheryl. Um, I am here today. I was, I have an art journal, but it's a little bigger than I like to work with, so I thought, what if I made my own? And so I've been goofing around today, and I came up with one that suits my needs and is really fun and simple and easy to make. And so I decided I wanted to share that with you today. I haven't put a closure on it yet. Um, I may just leave this band on because then it can expand, you know, Sometimes when you glue stuff into your art journals or you use some, like, molding paste or whatever, your journal tends to get a little bigger. So, And I wanted one with removable pages so I could do my art, but yet I didn't have to keep it in the book. I could add new ones in. So I came up with this today, and I thought I would share it with you. This is probably going to be a two-part video because this took me about an hour and a half, but I was creating it too, so... Hopefully now that I know what I'm doing, cross your fingers, um, it won't take me as long to do. So what I did with this one was very simple. It's it's very simple, very easy, very quick. Let's, let's take this off. And my journal has a flap on it. Okay, because I wanted to be able to close it up when I was done with it. I just wanted something to come over. And if you'll notice my flap is, I don't know if you can see it, I've got some bad glare and I'm really sorry about that, but my flap is, uh, I've scored it so that it's it'll round over the front and as my if my journal expands a little bit, it's got some give to it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's what I did. Um, to make it so that my pages were removable, I just ran an elastic piece of elastic through here. Uh, it's kind of like a thicker elastic thread that you use. I got mine about a pair of boots and I was like, I don't want to waste that, so I cut it out of there and saved it. Yeah, it worked perfect for this. So that makes my pages removable. I can just pull the elastic up. Whoops. <laughs> I can pull the elastic up. Excuse me, i got to turn it around. I can pull the elastic up if I can get it pulled up. And then I'm able to slide my pages in and out. And you can do this for a journal, too, if you want to make a journal instead of an art journal. Works the same. The only other thing I did was I uh, put a pocket back here, and I'm wishing now I wouldn't have. I wish I would have just used, like, a belly band or something instead. Because we always use parchment or wax paper or something underneath our projects so that we don't get paint or whatever we're using under our other page. And so I thought, oh, a pocket would be a great idea. And then they could just fold it up and store it in the back. That's a good idea, but I'm thinking a belly band might work much better. So maybe on the one we do, I will do a belly band. For this one, it is made out of one file folder. And I covered it with those uh, placemats I showed in that one crafting haul video. Because I got a lot of them. And to me, art is an adventure. And since this has, like, the Mariner's Compass and other things on it, kind of map-like, I thought, hey, why not? Because art is an adventure. It, to me, and I thought, hey, this is perfect for an art journal because art is an adventure to me. So <laughs> those two kind of adventures I have in this. All right, now that that's over, let's put this aside and let's get started. Okay, what you're going to need, I've got a whole bunch of things here that you're going to need. You're going to need a ruler of some type. I've got a Tim Holtz ruler. Any ruler is going to work fine. And just a plain pencil because we'll probably be marking out some stuff. Pair of scissors, your choice of the type. I uh, used paper cutter, so if you have a paper cutter, that's fine. If you don't, you can draw it out with your pencil and cut it with your scissors. I used my crocodile, but just a regular hole punch is going to work just the same for you. Nothing's too thick. I hate it when those things get. When you punch with a crocodile, a lot of times, whenever you punch out sticks in the thing, I wish. I love my crap it out. I just wish I'd come out with something better. I used a scoreboard for scoring my little lines, and you don't necessarily have to do that part of it if you don't want to. It's just what I do. You need just a file folder. I used the one with the tab in the middle because I wanted the tab to go over the front of my journal. Because if I do decide to attach something onto there, I'm going to attach it to the tab to fold it over. 
Uh, also, scrapbook paper or whatever you want. I'm using some Graphic 45 Steampunk Spells because I have a bunch of it. And that should be just about it for... Oh, and a piece of elastic thread, which I'm out of right now, but... Uh, when we get to that part, I'll just go through it with some baker's twine and just give you the idea if, if you don't know how to do this, but there's so many videos out here on YouTube that I'm sure you've probably seen them anyway. What I used in mine, I went to the store and I wanted to buy just uh, a book like, like this with uh, the mixed media paper in it, but they didn't have any. All they had was watercolor paper, so I'm like, well, yeah, we can use that, because they're very nice. They give you a guide in here on the inside. Oh, shoot, I'm off camera. Well, they give you this guide in here, and it shows you, you know, what all you can use on this, this uh, type of paper, and you can use pretty much anything on it, so I thought, fine, but I noticed that the watercolor paper is a lot. It's like a really, really good quality cardstock. It's a lot thicker than your regular original paper. So we'll see how that goes. Put these back and I'll be right back. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, I made mine nine by nine by six and a half. And you can do yours any size you want, but you'll need to know when you get to cut it how big you want it. So since I wanted my nine by six and a half and this is a twelve inch folder, I am gonna take an inch and a half off each side. Yes, I know I am using a small paper cutter, just like a regular paper cutter. The blade in here is old and bad and it will cut the file folder. It's going to be a little persistent. I don't recommend this. If you have the rotary cutter, by all means use it. I have one, but I have a lot of trouble seeing the numbers on the side because they did them in orange and I have extra time with that. So. I'm just going to measure to make sure because the last file folder I cut, I came out an eighth of an inch long. So, with 12, I need to take one and a half off, half of there, we should end up with a nine. Right? Right. So, just making sure. Some days my math isn't too good. <laughs> Alright, so, like I said, this blade is old and it's dull. Okay. Don't. You're going to have these strips left on your end. Don't throw them away. We're going to use them. Flip it over. Okay, now I just need the nine there. Take the one and a half. Ooh, that's... I must cut too big on that side. Okay, ding dong me. I headed in too far. All right, we're going to cut right there. All right, anyway, it's going to come out to nine inches. Yep, exactly. Okay, and like I said, do not throw these away. And it's going to be just a little off on here, but it's mine. I don't care. You'll probably want to measure yours a little better. <laughs> it's been one of those days. Okay, so now we need to decide how big you want it. And I mean, if you want it, you're going to have, when you fold your file folder like that, you're going to have this edge on it right here. And that is what you're going to determine how why do you want your uh, journal pages to be. Now the watercolor paper I bought was 9 by 12 so to me it just made sense to just fold it in half and go 9 by 6. So that is what I'm going to do but I'm going to leave an extra half an inch for my... you don't have to, you could go the whole 9 by 6, it doesn't matter. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up with my 6 and a half up. It's in the way and it's a disaster like usual here in my craft room. Okay, so I'm just going to line up where the edge of that fold is. Six and a half mark and cut. And okay, now, now I'm to the interesting part. Okay, I want to leave, I'm going to leave the flap on this one just like I did on the other one. So what I want to do with that is I want, I need to measure out my six and a half and I'm going to want to leave an extra quarter of an inch. So when I go to put this in my scoreboard, and if you don't have a scoreboard that's okay, there are other ways to score. Okay, so 
So I'm going to put it so that my edge of my spine is right against the edge of my scoreboard. And I'm going to be going out. I'm sorry, I know this is upside down to you, but I don't know if I can do it upside down. <laughs> I'm not very talented that way. All right, so there's my six and a half. I want to go out to six and three quarters because I want an extra quarter of an inch. And that will make sense once we get the... And I'm going to score it about two or three times with some pressure because it's like foul folders are like really heavy card stock. So then I'm going to fold it over and I'm just going to crease it down. Excuse me. This is driving me crazy. When I cut it, I had a little piece of the tear. And it's driving me nuts because I am that way. Okay, so now that I have this out here at six and a quarter, or six and three quarters, when it comes up, I'm going to have a quarter of an inch extra, which is good. Okay, so now we can just put this back in here, and I'm just going to put that edge up along there. And this part is a pain in the butt, but it's what makes the top roll. So we're going to go every eighth of an inch. And I know you probably can't see this too well, but I am scoring every eighth of an inch past my six and three quarters. Oops. And this is the bad part. You can't, it's, this is thick, and to keep it in the lines of this scoreboard is kind of tough. I think I, yep, I missed here, so I need to get it straight, because keeping it straight is like, and very important. So I'm going to recrease my lines here from six and three quarters. Six and seven eighths. There's my seven mark. And I'm just going to keep going until I get the amount of creases that I want in this. And that's every eighth of an inch. Like I said, it can be a pain to do, and it's a pain to fold, but it is so worth it in the end. So that's the only reason I take the time to even do it. You wouldn't have to. If you still wanted the flap that folded, you could just measure out probably like three quarters to an inch on this side because you want it to be able to expand. Just fold it over once and you'd have another, you'd have, it would look just like the, side, the other side where we folded it on the original fold to make the spine of our art journal. So, back of my lines. I've got such bad glare. And such bad everything else, I can't even tell where I'm at. Okay, and we'll just keep going. Like so, I thought about fast forwarding, but I don't think I'm going to be doing that. This is, like I said, this is probably going to be divided up into a couple parts. Okay, I'm getting up close to, I don't know if you can see on here. Oh my gosh, this is so bad, this lighting. Really got to do something about it. But you can see this folder has a, where it comes down for the tab. Okay, so I went up to about a quarter of an inch from the tab. And that's where I'm going to leave it at. Now, we're going to go for the unfun part. I don't think it's very much fun. And we're going to start folding on every one of these little, I don't know if you can see that. We're going to start folding on every one of those. And basically, that is just folding. On each line you just scored. Okay, so this is not my favorite part of it either, but it is so worth it if you want that little expandable joint in there. And you want to be careful when you're doing it because you're going to miss some of them if you're not careful. And it, really the only way to do this is just kind of work it a little bit at a time. And that's why I said it was so time consuming. But once once you're done with this, the rest of it's smooth sailing. It's easy. I guarantee it. Getting every one of them folded. Sometimes you have to go over one or two, fold that first, come back. It's kind of a pain in the behind. It's a technique I learned from a lady on here named Samantha Kingsley. She does some fantastic work with journals and stuff. And since I've been away from YouTube, I haven't been on her channel lately, but I'm trying to get back to everybody I used to watch, and finding new people along the way, which is very exciting to me, because I like to see what everyone's doing. I mean, love crafting, and I love to see what everybody else is doing, and naturally curious by nature, so 
see what I'm saying about this can be just a little pain to do this. So sometimes I get tired of trying to work with one area and go back to another area. How fast? scoreboard for one. There we go. Put that away and it is time to start reinforcing our spine. Now the spine on this one, so it's folded in part there, is three quarters of an inch and I'm going to want to go, this is why I said, oh gosh, save these pieces because we're going to use them right now. I'm sorry, I'm a disaster today. I didn't have to work today, and uh, I had to run to Madison anyway because I had to pick up my paycheck. You're going to want these just a little under three quarters, so you could go as much as an eighth under, which is what I did. Get everything lined up pretty straight. Hold that down. There we go. It's not going to matter because we're not going to use it. And what this is going to do is we're going to reinforce our spine because we don't want the spine of our book to rip. So, about, a, about five eighths of an five eighths. Um, anyway, you want to just go just a hair under three quarters. You can you can just you know take it down just a little tiny bit under, but as long as it's under three quarters of an inch, you're fine. And I'm just using tacky glue in mine. You can use score tape if you want. You can use whatever. Tacky glue is my choice. Because I don't want it to come apart. We're getting low on the tacky glue. So I am going to put this on the inside of my spine. I know I've got my paper cut in the way, but I'm going to cut another one in just a minute. Because I want the spine to be rather stiff because it's got to hold those pages once you put the elastic on. So I'm just going to center that kind of right in the middle where my, the spine of my journal is going to be. And I'm going to cut, got this one cut, I just need to cut it to, oh it is right about 9 inches. And it doesn't have to be exact, this is just, like I said, totally to reinforce the spine area of your journal. I'll lay this on its side and hope it doesn't ooze out because it's getting to be, it's getting kind of annoying when you tip it up and it doesn't want to come out. It's probably a little under halfway. So lay it there and hopefully it won't start running out on me. I did that one day. I thought, wow, you know, I had this bottle and it was running out. I thought, oh, I'll just lay it on the side and then all of a sudden it just started running glue everywhere. That was a mess. So I'm just now just going over this just to crease it down so that I have it and hopefully my middle inside one did not move. I always bend after I get those on to make sure that I haven't got them over the lines where it's going to fold because if that happens then you end up with some problems in getting your spine to work right and your journal to be able to open. So I'm just going to check my phone here. I don't want these to run too long. Okay, so we are almost at a half an hour right now. So the next step is going to be deciding what you want to cover your journal with. I mean, you can use paper. Maybe you've got some. Maybe you've got some, uh, oh, I don't know. Maybe you did some jelly prints you really like. Um, anything. Whatever you want. Just anything will do. So I'm just checking my measurements one more time. Just making sure. Because my last one, for some reason, ended up being nine and an eighth. Cut must have been off a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this at... I don't want this I'm going to go ahead and cut this at my six and a half. This will be for the very front of it. Like so. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut it at nine. I 
And that will be my front cover. And another piece of this. And I am going to measure the back because it's long. It's going to be bigger than the front. And I want to go right up to this last fold, my score lines here. I don't want to go over the top of it. I just want to go right up to it. And that is going to put me at about 6 and 5 eighths. So it's a little bigger than I thought it would be. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and go 6 and 5 eighths. There. Yeah. By 9, and I'm not worried too much about which way I'm cutting this paper because it's kind of an all over design. It'll work. No matter which way you cut it, it's going to look good. So there we go. I bought a bunch of this Graphic 45 paper at 2 in the morning, and you got like, I think, 25 pieces in a pack, and I think I got it to like $4.99 or something. And then they realized how cool Graphic 45 was, and they raised the price. So now they're like $6.99, I think, if you find them. So yeah. All right, now I'm just going to just gonna kind of put glue all over because, like I said, I like to use glue on my... I don't have the best luck always with tape, but you can sure use score tape, tape runner, whatever you want to use. It all works the same in the end. I'm just not the greatest with it. And I am applying quite a liberal amount of glue because I can always wipe off the excess. But I want to make sure it's going to stick. And I'll just be smoothing it down with my hands. Now when I go to lay this down, this is my front piece, and I'm going to make sure that I am not, make sure you have it turned the right way so that it's like this. You don't want it the other way, you're going to be doing the inside. I'm going to lay it down so that it is right even, right even along my fold here, but I do not want to go over the edge where it's going to fold. So I'm just going to lay it down, try to get it even with that. I'm just going to use my hands and just rub it down. Like so, and I've got my front on. See, just making sure that it does not go over. Right. right, we're going to do the same exact thing with the back, and we're going to leave that little bugger for now. Oh, now I sat my glue up again. Ah, because I'm awesome. All right, and I think probably after we get this part done, we're probably going to break here because, like I said, I don't want these videos to get too long, and we are already pretty close, eh, a little over the half hour mark, and I don't want to go too long with these, so it's going to be a two or three parter, I'm not sure which. I am really going to try my hardest to, like I said, my gluing methods, just because I want to get this video going are kind of haphazard, but the last one I did Mod Podge on, and I wasn't exactly too happy with that because it kept coming out, I don't know, it didn't come out right, so I'm going to put it right up to the edge, check it, make sure that I'm not over that crease, and I'm just going to, and I can see I my cut got a little bit off, but just we'll just trim that with the scissors when we're done, so that's not a big deal either. Now, how I did this part of my other one, I just took some paper, since I had plenty of it, and I just glued it down. Again, make sure you don't go over any of these little score lines. Just go right up to them, but do not go over them. So I'm going to do the same thing here, and I save all my paper scraps, so there will always be a project I can use it on. And I'm just going to glue the whole flap, just for the sake of getting this done. Please take your time. When I am, and then I'm just going to put this on there and make sure I do not go over that score line. Or my folds, my folding is. And I've folded all that for nothing. Okay, so there's my last score line. Get it up even against that. I'm just going to press it down good. And of course, when you're doing this, you would definitely wait until it dried. But like I said, for the sake of time here, I'm just going to cut with the scissors and cut it off. And if you want, you can use like if you've got hobby knives, exacto knives, you can go ahead and cut around with that. I almost think it would make a smoother cut than the scissors. But 
for the sake of the video. And like I said, you would definitely let yours dry. I am just going to go ahead and cut. So that one. And I'm just going to trim this up right here. And I see I have a little bit sticking over here, which is no big deal because we're just we can just trim those right off. I must have had the paper just a little tiny bit crooked in there. And then what you do is just come down here where your flap is. I'm sorry, I'm zoomed in because I have such bad lighting in here right now. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, this tickles my throat. Then I just cut right up to this corner. Round it off. Come across this part like this where your tab is. And you could cut the tab off. You don't have to leave the tab on. I just happen to want it on my journal. But if you don't want it on there, you can cut it off and just make a smooth straight edge. And then it's just a matter of measuring. And I'm just leaving my goofs in because, you know, we all goof up. We all make mistakes. I'm a little bit nervous today doing this. So, yeah, I'm going to make a few mistakes. Okay, so then just cut it out like that. I see a little more to trim. Careful not to cut your file folder. And we'll just trim this little bit off here. Just like so. Oh, that's my basement door. It's creaky. Put some oil on it to spring. And we have this much completed. We've already got that much. And I'm going to break it off right here so that this video doesn't go any longer. And I will see you back in a day or two. And we'll do the next part in this. Maybe we'll even get it finished because it's all downhill from here. So I will see you very, very soon. Thank you for joining me and have a great day.